young man who was trying his best to move the nation forward, you went to Daura and brought a man who, after leaving power, after being pursued out of power in 1985, mm. President uh, uh, General Muhammadu Buhari did not relinquish power in 1985. He was dethroned mm. after being removed from power in 1985. From 1985 to 2015, 30 years, this man never wrote a book. This man never went to school. This man never gave a public lecture. This man never even showed you a business he had improved on. Yeah. This man was in Daura, minding his cows. Yeah. But you people felt that, oh, Jonathan was not playing balls. You went and brought a man that does not understand the current situation of things around the world. Imagine the embarrassment in the U.S. immediately after this man was declared the winner of the election. He was asked, oh, by a lady, a lady journalist in the U.S., how are you going to run your government, the inclusive, inclusiveness? You know what Buhari said? President Buhari said, eh, those that voted for me, I will treat them specially. Those that did not vote for me, I will then them. He divided Nigeria. No, 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 it's not, it's not, it's not a joke. President Buhari divided Nigeria into 97%. And 5%, a president. That was where our problem started. That was the mindset of the man that President of this same Obasanjo brought to us in 2015. Mm. So, first of all, before President Obasanjo, we not, because everything he has said, some of us did not only campaign mm. against the emergence of President Buhari. We have kept him on his toes for the past three years. So if a person don't wants to join the wedding whalers as they call us, he should take a tag and queue up behind. He cannot, he will not leave this, he will not lead this revolution. Because look at it holistically. There is nothing President Obama, Chief of Obasanjo has said that is not true. Nothing. President Bari doesn't have an idea of the economy. The, it, 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 was a, it was a calamity to have brought this man to power. It was a mistake. It was an unforgivable mistake to my own generation to have brought a man that is nearly this I don't understand to have brought him to power at this age when presidents are discussing with each other on Twitter when they, sorry on, on WhatsApp when presidents are conversing on social media when presidents are discussing with the citizenry on social media you went and brought a man who doesn't who cannot even understand simple English to come and be president President Obasanjo and every other person, and every other person, Pastor Tude Bakari, Chief Femi Volano, all of them that brought this catastrophe on night. You know when I said the last time, I said, what Buari has done, everybody is a victim. Even his party members are victims. Because there is no separate market for APC members. Yeah. There is no market you go to where they will tell you, oh, with your APC card, you can buy rice at 8,500 Naira. You can buy fuel at 87 Naira. No! Everybody goes to the same market. Obasanjo is affected. Dangote is affected. Everybody is affected. 180 million people are suffering for the decision of people like Chief Oluseng Obasanjo. So yes, Buhari is a catastrophe. President Buhari is a catastrophe. But beyond that, those who brought him to power, there was no way Buhari could have won the 2015 election. Because... All through the campaigns, all through the, the campaigns leading to the 2015 elections, do you know there was no instance that President Buhari actually engaged the public? You know what you call interactions, engagement, that you're able to ask questions? Because they were shielding him. President Obasanjo cannot tell us that he's just knowing that President Buhari does not have idea or a hold or an understanding of the economy. No! He knew it in 2015. They protected this man from public engagement. They protect. They shielded him from people asking questions. We asked them. We took them to court. Where is the Where is the result of this man? Where is the Wahek result of this man? Up to today, they refused to produce that. You brought a. I mean, how can you look at Nigerians? What ought me? I don't care if Abga had won. I don't care if Labour Party had won. I don't care. It's not about my party. It is about the fact that Nigeria's progress was truncated now. Whichever president comes in in 2019, eh, it will take us 10, 15, 20 years to rebuild what this man has destroyed. Wow. You want to talk about corruption? Let, let, let them go back to Daura. Let APC live in 2019. You will understand the corruption that is happening in this government. For the wife of the president to come out and tell you, 
that she don't she doesn't understand what is going on in her government. This presidency has been hijacked. It's simple as that. The wife is complaining, the daughter is complaining, all the supporters are complaining. Dele Momodu is complaining. I mean, people who stood by Obasanjo is complaining now, mm. but they came late to the party. There's something about Obasanjo I really, really, really would like to talk about. Now, we know how he came out uh, when Jonathan was in power. And what did we see? We saw a public uh, display of how the party card was torn, you know, and everything. <laughs> now, people during that period <coughs> said maybe it was as a result of Jonathan not, you know, playing to his gallery and all that. Now, in this case, would you, wouldn't, wouldn't one say it may be the same thing that's playing out right now? Is it that Buhari isn't playing to his gallery? Or See. is he coming out to say outrightly See. that there is incompetence, gross incompetence? <laughs> is it about See. being incompetent I, or because they are not playing to his I, gallery? I'd like us to raise the discussion. Mm. People like President Obasanjo should leave Nigeria alone. Please. Do you know what he's doing? He has seen that practically today there is no way Buhari will come back. It's not possible. It is not possible. I said it last time I was here. If they want to kill all of us, they should shoot us. It is not possible for this government to come back. We will not only vote them back, we will protect every, every single vote against them. Do you know why? Hmm? If they want to use the army or the police or security agencies to, to rig, for goodness sake, those security operatives, do they like the way they are buying rice at 18,000 naira per bag? We are going to see. We are going to bring all the feelings and the, and, the, and the disappointment that this government is. We are going to put them out on the front burner. Even our neck officials. We will ask them, how much have you been sending to your parents? So forget about rigging. It's not going to happen. Whatever you want, look at what is happening in Benin. How can a responsible government, how can a president that calls himself a democratically elected president not have been to Benin? The first time it was the flood issue. He sent his vice president. On the day men and women were dying in Benue out of flood, this man went to Daura. Now, people have been massacred every day. The president, what is he doing in Asoro? You wouldn't say Benue is on What is, forget, you know the problem with the president. Mm. The man is, is clueless. President Wari is overweight. He doesn't know. What is he doing? In Asoro, who is he meeting? So it is okay for the president to be meeting with Southeast uh, political leaders and whatever you call them while men are dying in Benue and he has not found it fit. Even as a father, forget as a politician, as a father, as a father that has children, you have not found it fit to go to Benue. But you can host men, you can host people, you can go send them to Abia. We have an, a totally, a completely irresponsible government. And I, 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 I say this and I own it. We have a government that is a calamity. A government that should not only be allowed to go out, but should be taken to the International Criminal Court. I am serious. Look at what they've done to Nigeria. They've stagnated us. We have become a laughing stock all over the world. EFCC said they reclaimed some money. Now we're hearing that $500 million that was reclaimed by EFCC has gone missing under this government. A government that is fighting corruption. Several months, almost one year, that Baba Chelawa left office. ESCC is ready to arrest him. This government, listen, eh? for me, I wish that the PDP would step up its game. I wish that the People's Democratic Party, the main opposition party in Nigeria, would understand what is called strategically engaging an irresponsible government. Believe me, this, even if they condemn the election today, APC will not get 10,000 votes. Even their members will vote against them. Because everybody is suffering. Everybody in this government, what has Obasan just said today that is new? I am more worried about the tone that he's bringing in. He brought in Yaradwa. He has always had a hand in who becomes president in Nigeria. And that is a wrong thing for my generation. A man like that should not deter. He was the one that brought us to this, to this, to this sorry pass. He has always had a hand. And what he does is he, he, he gauges the public mood. When he sees where it is swinging, he now comes to the front and hones the, the drive. No, Mr. President, on this year, passenger, Nigerian people have decided on their own that they will take President Buhari back to Daura. Welcome to the party, but you came late. All right, we also have in the studio Jide Ojo. He is a political analyst as well. Good morning to you and welcome to Marta Lisa. Good morning, Rigo. Apologies for coming late. All right, apologies accepted. Now, we're talking about uh, former President Lushagun Abbasanjo's letter to Buhari. 
what exactly would one make of that letter? Uh, for me, <laughs> it's just contributing to public discourse. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's saying the minds of millions of Nigeria. Uh, but the position is not ingenious to him. It's not, it's not the originator. Uh, three weeks ago, if you go on my uh, Facebook page, uh, Victor Sinagbensi and I mm. were on uh, WFM and we were talking about the election deed of uh, president. And I took that position three weeks ago that, look, for me, this man should not run. He, he has no fresh ideas to give us. And at his age, he should just go and be with his family. 75, that's conservative age. Mm -hmm. we, we, even Ani, I consider that he's 75. But uh, must we be ruled by gerontocrats? Um, virtually everything APC promised us, they, they failed to deliver. Uh, they're just wobbling and fumbling along. Uh, yes, uh, you know, yeah, the growth without development, 7.5 million jobs lost in two years, 2016, 2017. Um, yes, inflation is reducing, but what is the margin of reduction? We are still double digit in inflation, 15 point something percent. Is that something we want to celebrate when you say uh, inflation has reduced by 0.5 percent? I mean, we are talking of coming to single digit. Look at the interest rate. NPC could not even meet yesterday and Monday because the members of the monetary policy committee that were nominated by the president has not been confirmed by the Senate. And that has caused a dip in the stock exchange of Nigeria because that it's, it's, it's a situation where you have a ruderless, uh, you know, they, they, could not, they could not form quorum. So one can go on and on. Is it insecurity you want to talk about? I met my colleague talking about the X-Men killing in Benue. I mean, it's not even only Benue. We've talked about this virtually every day. Uh, secret killings are still going on. Uh, the president is just sending the ministries. And uh, even to, 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 to worsen the situation, he has to, rather than going to mourn with the people, is the people that are coming to him. The, more, the, more, mm. the victims mm. are the ones that are paying him visits. When it should be the other way around. Uh, so, so, you know, it depends on which side of the divide, but I'm on the side of the people. Uh, if you read my column two weeks ago, I said yellow card to APC. These are documented. I'm not a new, new day convert. It's not like I'm joining the free. I've already made up my own mind uh, long before now. So, but Sajok is cashing in on public mood. He's gauged it. He knew where the people that... And I think we should run away from one thing that Obasanjo fostered what A, B, C, or D leadership on us. We accepted whoever they presented. In many instances, it's the choice between the devil and the deep blue sea. I mean, Obasanjo's vote has always been one vote. So, we can't, you know, it's just when you, when you try to... Uh, be over generous to an individual you say is the one that brought a particular president. This vote is just one. And I, I, he's not even a member of the, he's not a party agent, he's not, we didn't hear him stuffing ballot box or, you know, he just take his own position. So, well, we have, we have people that are called influencers, but it's not only of us and that means whoever has been there have voted in they were all voted in by the people of this country. Mistakenly, rightly, wrongly, we must accept responsibility for the leaders we have produced. And Nigerians have said, they, they, they are saying enough is enough. If you have not improved our lot to your tent, O Israel, we cannot continue to suffer and smile, like Fela said uh, years back. Um, leadership has failed us. And for me, I've said this also, what we have currently is a change of party, uh -huh. but not change of government. So, invariably, you have the same old, you know, elite still governing us. And many of them have lost track of modern-day leadership requirements. So, you, you, you can just imagine, even to appoint board of MDAs, it has taken this administration 
close to three years. And even at that, they made a they made a mincemeat of even hitting her neck so much so that they cannot even screen the people that they are appointing now they have withdrawn that list almost how many weeks now we have not seen another list coming out the month of january is going so and these are aberrations when mdas are not governed properly the board that are supposed to be policy uh, th that are supposed to shape the policy framework of many of these NDA. When they are not in place, what the chief executive of those organizations are doing is more like uh, act in acting capacity because sometimes you need those boards to give directive on what, what needs to be done and what needs to be done. But it has taken this administration two and a half years, and yet they have not even accomplished that. Look at the social intervention scheme, uh, the social intervention program. I saw on TV yesterday they were celebrating 5.2 million uh, children being fed in 19 states. This is about the third year of this administration. They cannot even have a nationwide social intervention scheme. So much so that we are talking of 19 out of 36 states, only Nigerian uh, homegrown school feeding program. The empower they talked about, out of the 500,000 they promised since 2016, They've only delivered, um, somebody was correcting, I thought they, they, uh, they, they recruited the last 300,000 last December, there about. he said it's only additional 150,000 that was added to the initial 200,000. So that means we will see only the completion of that empower in 28, 2019. So, what, and the, the, you, you look at the number of people who have lost, not who have gained employment, but who have lost job, some point something million. Now you are doing empower where you pay people 30,000 naira in a month and you cannot even absorb them over right. two year period. All so right. unfortunately. We have, we have Elder Emmanuel Okoro also in the studio. Uh, we have to uh, try to make it as brief as possible so we can uh, go around everybody before we conclude on the show. Good morning to you, Elder Emmanuel, and welcome to Marjorie. Oh, we go. Thank you. You know, I was under the weather, so I'm happy that I'm with my family. Oh. Thank you so much. Uh, um, so I want to really say something, we go. Please, ordinarily, we, the president of Nigeria is our president. Oh. And this program is trending internationally. We must be a little bit civilized. We are all angry. Oh. But it is our language over our president as an institution is important to me as, as a member of this community. Okay. The issues were raised by our people across the media, and I've, I said it here severally. The problem of the president is bad handling. Bad handling. Those, those who are managing him. Mm. Erufai wrote this booklet. Okay. And why is that why the president failed? In this country we have the Dr. Tayo Astro, the press the chairman of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations. He has organized a several seminars, summits, conferences to train those who are working for government to listen to the public and relay it to the policymakers so they be effective answers. I said it here. The Minister of Information, Allah Jalai Mohammed, is a great failure. Remember? Yeah. When the president was sick, he lied to us that the president was hale and hearty. It wasn't Mohammed Buhari who was saying it. It was somebody handling him. Uh, my friend, Femi Adeshino, in Villa, we asked him, how you get information from our sick president? He says he gets it from a third party who knows who gets near the president. Now, what Tayo Hastrop has been talking about is citizen engagement. There are three citizens here. We are engaging you. Yeah. You are engaging us. And the public is engaging us all. The president's party in 2015, the APC, voted him into power. <clears throat> Some people who were self you know, the, the, the wife said it here, and, and I mentioned it. She said, they provided the party that elected this man, oh, and nobody listened to it. And I said, I said it here that this woman is a very brilliant woman. Let's all, let us all agree. President Mohamed Buhari is not a failure as a person. Mm -hmm. It is that the team has assembled. So you mean those who are around him are the ones who have failed? They failed. I mentioned here that out of the way, who is Minister of Agriculture, has a pedigree of failure. Mm. 
But if we, one man is not a, one, man, one tree cannot make a forest. Mm. There are certain achievements. For example, this president is a man of integrity. The international community listening to him. What worries us and what worries a lot of people is this. He, he, he has been told things and people shield him from hearing. You are hearing me now. If I throw this my pen on you, you will re react. But if there is a war between me and you, you wouldn't even know I'm throwing a, war, uh, throwing a pen on you. Our own citizens have complained that the channels of democratic engagement must be on. And my friend Jide talked about the APC, NWC. I'm ashamed that we are still saying that the non WC of the APC is all unable to, to, to meet with the president, to meet with the ru ruling cabal. And my friend here, Dr. PDP, PDP has humongous deficiencies that may not make them. That's what about Sanjo, whether you like him or hate him, he calls them as he sees them. He says, the PDP is unable. Let us face it. We need a stronger third force to galvanize this, our views. PDP has been in power for 16 long years. Uh, let us understand. They made certain achievements. And I pray to God here that they should not die as a political party. But to simply anybody sitting here, fasting and praying, hoping that PDP will come back and give us a magic. Please, go back to the, uh, to the PDP headquarters. Look at those 18 men who are there. They have been there before. You don't give what you don't have. The same people who have been in PDP, there, there, we go. Oh, yesterday, let's... yesterday we saw this guy. Let's... Um, <laughs> let's, let's, let's be like, he talked about it. Let's so it's not a question of PDP. It's a question of Nigerians you know exactly. really building a better country. First thing, mm. first thing I would like to correct is, yes. no human being has the right to tell another person uh. how to express himself. Yeah. Nobody. That arrogance should be totally taken off. I'm a taxpaying Nigerian, uh. and nobody not even the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria can come into the studio to me and tell me no, this no, but, but, but let's, let's the president. Do you let's understand? Let's you see. are nobody to tell me that. Okay. You cannot. You may be angry, but don't abuse the You president. have no. Please. You have nobody no. to tell me that. Just, this same no. APC that that's called just, Jonathan no. Ipopotemos, no. white Ipopotemos, you lack no, the no, moral. No, no, you no, lack no, the no, moral no, to no, tell no, me no, that. No, please, you lack. Please, you are a guest as I am. Take it completely away from your mind that you can tell me how to address the president. This president is a failure, and enough of this psychophantic and calamitous painting of the issue. What do you mean by he organized a, a useless team? Who did, did you have make the appointment for him? If after six months, this is the best you can give us, Mr. Man, you are a failure. Please, empire, yeah. I don't care. Pick me up outside the gate. Arrest me. I don't care. Empire, we have suffered enough. Three years of Nigerians living like victims of war. People can barely feed. You tell me to come to the studio and sound politically correct. As who? This president is going back to Daura. And what will we be? What we came to discuss is about Sonjo. It is not only enough that we we'll kick this man back to Daura. Nigerians must not allow men like Obasanjo to determine their fate tomorrow. That's that it is not enough for my generation to stop a 70-something-year-old man from being president. This nation must be taken away from the people who have become traditional kingmakers. What is the letter. best that they can give to us? Let's go back to Letter Prince. Thank now, uh, former President Lucian Obasanjo made mention of uh, the need for a coalition movement. Listen, now, that coalition movement, listen, have. the coalition movement mm -hmm. eh, is, is a very smart way of President Obasanjo wanting to come back to power. How do you mean? I'm a strategist. Go and look at all the names that are there. Those are people that, that are loyal to him. Nigeria does not belong to President Obasanjo. I, I refuse to accept that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Go and look at all the names that are there. All of them. There are people that have worked under him, that have worked with him. President Bajo wants to come back to power. So when you hear a man like that saying, we are giving this one, we are giving that one, did he not study an elder like Chief Obasanjo? Did he not study the person and character of President Bajo Duwari before selling it to Nigerians in 2015? Couldn't he have gone for this third force he's going for today? Now, you put us all through this mess, not even in all his words. I've read the 18-page letters. In all his words, not one place did President Obasanjo don't offer an apology to Nigerians. That is unacceptable, sir. Totally unacceptable. Now, let's discuss the points that the president raised. 
the main point that concern me, I, I jotted them down here to come. Poverty. Look around you. There is no kind of business you do that has not taken a hit in the past two and a half years. Nothing. No, and I don't mean you as a politician. I mean you as a tax-paying, responsible citizen. There is no import business, manufacturing, even farming. There is nothing you are doing that has not been affected. So poverty is rampant. And what they did, I was, I was, um, I monitored the Anambra election. Do you know people were collecting 500 naira to twist their own vote? Members of a party will collect 500 and vote for another party. That shows you how poverty has been turned into a political weapon mm -hmm. by this administration. And if they are open to use that in 2019, ha, they have something else coming. So that's number one, the about your race, which is a good point, which you've always come here to discuss. Number two point that is raised, insecurity and Edmund menace. Why is there a shutdown? Where is there a cover-up of the activities of even Boko Haram in the Northeast? Why is the media not allowed on fit access to give us the true situation of things happening in the Northeast? That is number one. Number two, this Edmund uh, uh, Fulani, uh, uh, Edmund uh, 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 massacre that is going on everywhere, it has gotten to a point where an elder statesman in Benue can rise up mm. and tell you we will mobilize one million foot soldiers to defend our land. Why? Because the president they thought they voted for in 2015 has not only abandoned them, he has shown implicitly his ethnic bias against them as a people. Not only did he abandon them, because what is going on today in Benue, if only the PDP knew or still understands what being an opposition means. By now, every foreign leader around the world should be talking about the massacre and the ethnic cleansing going on in Benin. Let's let's talk with Jide Ujo right now. Uh, looking at this letter of the former president, now do you think that Buhari should heed to the advice of the former president, or will it also be a case of discarding it, just like that of his predecessor talking about former president Jonathan? Well, uh, that's speculative. It's hypothetical. Uh, I did say in, in the earlier reference, um, you know, discussion I had on WFM, where I said, well, I'm offering my own layman's opinion. At 75, he should go and rest. He has accomplished virtually everything. And God has been so kind to him. I mean, this time last year, nobody was even talking about whether he's going to go for 2019. Mm. He, was, so he, was, he was wrestling for his mm. life. He came, he couldn't stay two weeks or three weeks. He had to be flown back. And there were very wild speculations that he's even giving up the ghost. You, you knew about it. So much so that, you know, this president for the, up till August when he eventually came back, we were praying and fasting that God should grant him, you know, a speedy recovery. So, barely two, three months, four months after, you are now giving the impression that, and don't forget, it's as a result of this, it seems, and I'm choosing my work carefully, to have had a gentleman's agreement with inner caucus of APC that was going to do one time. That was what also happened in the case. You see, people don't learn from history. That was what happened with the case of uh, Jonathan too. He told some people, including our pastor, he was going to do one time. Only for him to get to power and say, where is the written agreement? There is what is called gentleman's agreement. Mm. Nobody in the presidency has debunked what Adia Alazan, uh, uh, the Minister of Women Affairs, said. When she said, look, Mr. President, you told us you are doing one time. And that is why we supported you. Now, my principal, Atiku Abatika, has that impression. And, you know, that was part of the reason Abubakar left. APC for PDP. Nobody has said that the president didn't make that commitment. It may, it may not have been public, but he did say, possibly, to some people within the kitchen cabinet that he was going to do only one thing. So why is he reneging on that? That was exactly what Jonathan did that caused him his Waterloo. 
They printed only one nomination form. They, all the other people that even paid money, they said, no, there is only one nomination form, and it's for President Jonathan. So at the end of the day, look at the implosion that happened in PDP. So that's why I said what we have is a change of party, not a change of government. So if you get there, after you have served Nigeria as head of state, and now as civilian president, and you want to go for a re-election, over what? What did you, what couldn't you do in four years that you want to go and do in no, eight years? No. The insecurity is still escalating. Even if we say we have decimated technically Boko Haram, what about kidnapping? What about robbery? What about this s -man killing? Where thousands of lives have been lost and many millions of people displaced. The s -man killing is rated number four terrorist organization. In the world. In the right. world. Let's let's talk about Elder Emmanuel. Uh, fin final words. Final words. Final words. Final words? Yeah. Final words. We are already out of time. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for giving me this short time. Oh. Um, the important thing I think we should realize is that I said the pulse of the nation is that our country needs help. Number one. Oh. I am not going to preach for any part, political party here. I'm only a journalist and a, and a public relations uh, consultant. All I'm saying is, in our country, yeah. we have come to a point where, at the crossroads, we need a new thinking that APC and PDP may not provide. That's why I agree with Abbas Anjo. And my friend here, who's very angry, and I'm also angry, but I'm just being very careful. Abbas Anjo is our former president. He has more to give. And this country can 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 thank him for mm. simply sitting here and calling him names would not make him go. He's a statesman of great intellectual height. Mm. He has experience. Does he really have, have more to give? Yes. The reason is that he has been the only man that ruled this country three different times. You can't throw that experience away. And let me make it clear to Owego. Obasanjo did not make me vote where I voted. At the time we voted, where we voted. We were in a situation where we needed a change. When about 25 of us and just could not have made me change. But the point I'm making here is, one, we will insist that anybody who comes to power must talk to us. It's not about shouting. It's not about being angry. If I'm angry between now and next tomorrow, uh, 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 the agricultural minister will still be there. The issues they have raised here are genuine issues trending in the polity. And the only way we can give solutions, as John Kerry said before, Nigeria's solutions are within Nigeria. But we need to source the people. I gave an experience here. After we, your, your, the media organized a get together, I brought all the SAs, me, Imokoro, I brought all the SAs to the governors. I brought them in one hall here in Abuja. I said to them, You people are shielding governors from hearing. They were shocked to hear from great source persons who said, Open up the access so that Nigerians will talk to the governors. You, you knew when the, the minister of FCT, last minister, said that his SAs are liars who should go to prison because he came out and saw the reality. And now you know the FCT minister in Abuja is not happy that Wigo's uh, uh, program, Majelisa, has brought him out to see the, 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 the dilapidation. He's passed here two times on this uh, Abuja, uh, Abuja road. So, whether you bring uh, 20 Buharis mm. or 1 million Buharis, the one big point, as a, an IPA leader said, is engage us to those who rule us so they know what are the issues and what the police officers are. Right, That's my view. You. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Prince, final words. My final words is to, exactly to Nigerians. The time for fear is gone. The time for us to be scared of telling the president the truth is gone. It is also to the media. It is also to civil society groups around the world. Mm. The time to fight for the soul of Nigeria is now. We have had enough. EFC will arrest you. My, this, my dad called me yesterday. That someone sent him a video that I should be careful I talk to boy. And I told him, sir, please, don't ever send me this kind of video again. Sir, please. Your own father. Because I know what this party will do. Will do. Mm. Once you come out and you engage them, how many people can they arrest? The power of intimidation is gone. My challenge today is not to President Buhari and the people in the in, in EFCC or DSS or something. They are too small. We have to save the soul of this nation. Everybody should come out. Time for fear is gone. Mm -hmm. The highest that they can do, they have 13 months. So if they lock you up, it's just 13 months. 
It's not like 2016 or 2015 when we were scared that we would spend years. No, they have only 30 months to the election. So come out for the soul of now. If the president is messing up, he says something about the monetary policy com uh, committee. Can you imagine a sensitive, important committee as that could not sit because one man in Asso Rock chose to disobey the decision of the Senate. That is why the Senate refused to confirm his nominees to the committee. And without a quorum, they cannot sit. Why would this president, why would this single individual run this country down? And people are keeping quiet. Elders are keeping quiet. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Gideon, let's have a final one. Well. Again, the choice is with us. Third force, fifth force, 24th. Citizen engagement is very key. I agree and line my thoughts with Elder Okoro. What we need is not party. This is bipartisan. What we need is a real change. Change that people can feel that their lives are better, not worse off. Some of us, the few of us that are having little, little change, the dependency ratio on us is just so much that we, are all being, we have all been impoverished. So we need a better society. And to get that better society, let's shut our eyes. PVC, go and get your PVC ready There's ahead no of PVC. 2019. No All right. Go and get it ready and vote your conscience. That, what, that is what I will say. Whether it's third, fourth, tenth, fourth, twenty-fourth, shine your eyes, assess all the candidates and cast your ballot. Not because Obama so just says so. Oh. Not because Buari says so. Not because Jido Odo says so. But because we are convinced we are making the right choice. Because we have to live with that, those choices that we are going to make in 2019. Exactly. All right, thank you so much. I must say thanks to my guest today. I'll imagine this hour time is up already. We have to go. Thanks to our Jideo Joe, political analyst. Also, thanks to Elder Emmanuel Okoro. He's a care consultant with Babati Magazine. And also, Prince Harry Nwazuram Shield, uh, Director of Leadership and Accountability Project, a non governmental organization and also a member of the PDP. Thank you so much for coming to Matulisa today. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having us. I will do it again at the same time tomorrow. Matulisa will make a return at the 8 o'clock hour. Thanks uh, to all those who have been a part of it. I have many WhatsApp messages. Apologies, I cannot take, uh, including the one that says, the shame on you, or we go to bring people like that shout into the studio. No matter the situation, it should be civil. Thank you so much for your message as well. There are many others, but then let's do it again same time tomorrow. Up next will be a message from Buffy Furniture, and after that...